Imagine needing to carry around a boom box if you wanted to listen to music on your daily run, or forgetting to bring your favorite mixtapes before embarking on a road trip. It's now easier than ever to listen to your favorite songs, but this wasn't always the case. How did we go from gathering around a giant radio to streaming the brand new Taylor Swift album while waiting for the bus? Heck, there was a point in time when the only way to listen to music was to hear it live. Well, at the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, people began experimenting with sound recording. In 1877, inventor Thomas Edison created the phonograph, a completely analog sound recording device. You could also use the same machine to play back the audio you recorded, and voila! The first music listening device was born. Still a far cry from listening to Spotify on your smartphone through your AirPods, though. In the 1920s, electric microphones and electrical sound recorders started to become the industry norm. This meant so long to the days of the silent film. People were talking their heads off on the big screen and singing their hearts out on records. The next phase in sound innovation occurred during World War II with the discovery of magnetic tapes. This new tape technology allowed musicians to record longer, clearer, and more layered songs. Songs. For the first time, music producers could use the recording technology to manipulate sound and edit songs. While record players and the vinyl LP was king at the time, the cassette tape would hit the consumer market as a less bulky and more portable alternative. But soon, even tapes were considered obsolete. Digital audio came to dominate the market with the emergence of compact discs, aka CDs. These two would eventually fall by the wayside. As technology moved forward, downloading music became the way to go. Forget about the Walkman, Discman, or iPod. Today, we don't even need a separate device for music. If you have your smartphone with you, you can listen to whatever song you want, whenever you want. Record shops became a popular hub for music lovers, especially in the 70s and 80s. You could hear the latest from Queen or The Clash playing over the sound system while flipping through records, trying to decide which album would be your next purchase and which song would be your next anthem. Today, nostalgia for record shops and music on vinyl is a huge phenomenon. Some prefer the warmer quality of the sound and the ritual of picking out a record that fits the mood. Even younger people who didn't grow up with vinyl are flocking to their used record shops to broaden their collection. Artists like Lord and Kanye West are even releasing their new music on vinyl as well as in digital format. It seems the LP record is not fading into the background so quietly. One place you can't listen to a record is in the car. The car radio used to be the only source of entertainment on long road trips. Eventually, the eight-track cassette player allowed drivers to listen to their own music selections. The tape was divided into four segments, so there was no way to rewind that song you just heard. These bulky tapes finally gave way to the familiar-looking cassette, which you could rewind or fast-forward on cue. But back in the day, if mom and dad wanted to listen to country while the kids in the back wanted to rock out, the battle was about who controls the radio dial. Nowadays, it's the one with the aux cord who determines the tunes. Or your car may even have Bluetooth, meaning that you can listen to music wirelessly on the road. If it gets too intense, everyone can just put on their noise-canceling headphones and stream their own playlist. Except the driver, of course. The strides made in music tech would not be possible without the Japanese company Sony. You can thank them for the consumer tape recorder, home stereo systems, the boombox, the CD player, and the creation of personal audio devices. Phew! It's impossible to imagine what the music industry would look like without their innovations. Arguably the biggest game changer was the Sony Walkman. It made music available where 
wherever and whenever for the first time. Walking, running, on the bus, in a plane? You could now listen to music literally anywhere. Released in 1979, the Walkman was a must-have all through the 80s. The Discman followed with the growth of CDs, and eventually we saw the rise of MP3 players in the early 90s. In the late 1990s, Apple emerged as a threat to all music playing devices when they released their fleet of iPods. Oh yeah, and Apple knows a thing or two about marketing. Who can forget those dancing silhouette commercials for the iPod in the early 2000s? The sticking power of the brand means that their devices, which were once considered a luxury, are now inescapable. After the iPod came the iPhone, and now everyone had a personal soundtrack to their life. Headphones then became an integral part of one's listening experience. It was in the 1950s that John C. Koss developed the first headphones explicitly for music. Before then, headphones were mainly used by telephone operators. What once were big and bulky, headphones were slimmed down to pair with portable devices like the Walkman. This was great for convenience, but the listening experience suffered. These spongy headphones paved the way for the first earbuds, but this did nothing to enhance the listening listening experience. So who better to develop music tech than the artists themselves? Dr. Dre created his headphone company Beats by Dre in 2006. With its sleek design and modern tech, Beats were the alternative to the tinny sound of earbuds. Apple then took the concept of earbuds one step further and came out with their new wireless AirPods. Great for convenience, just make sure to check your pockets for your pesky little AirPods before doing laundry. In the 60s, it was all about the live concert. In the 70s and 80s, it was the club scene, and the 90s saw the rise of stadium tours, with pop and rock, country and hip-hop dominating the music charts. Now it's more common to listen to music by yourself, leading to new subgenres like bedroom pop. Artists like Claro have a quiet lo-fi sound that is best experienced through good quality headphones. Also, with the rise of TikTok, artists focus on creating catchy hooks and a strong chorus in hopes that their song will go viral. Tech innovations have also shaped how music is shared. Kids used to have listening parties where they'd pool their records together so they could compile all their favorite songs on one mixtape. Tapes were given as gifts as a sweet way to share with a friend or loved one all the songs that reminded you of them. The physical gift of music is now obsolete. People do sometimes make and share playlists with one another, but it's hard to wrap up a Spotify playlist and put it under the Christmas tree. As the 21st century approached, it was clear that buying physical music was going the way of the dinosaur. With the advent of the internet, Napster, established in 1999, offered the first peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network. People were freely able to share audio files and bypass paying the record companies. Of course, this was not okay with the music industry, and after a legal battle, Napster shut down in 2002. The music industry is always nervous about change at first. There were huge anxieties about moving from vinyl to CDs, then from CDs to digital. But even before Napster, people always found a way to get free music. You could record it onto cassette from the radio, provided that the DJ didn't talk too long over the song's intro. In the era of the compact disc, you could just burn a copy of your friend's CD. The digital age just made the problem more widespread because of its ease iTunes tried to combat this by selling song downloads for a measly 99 cents. Streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music have made buying downloads irrelevant by having a cheap subscription rate. Users can listen to and store as many songs as they want for a low monthly price. 
They can even listen for free if they don't mind being interrupted by ads or having a limited number of skips. While this is a paradise for music lovers, this model doesn't do much to help out artists, especially smaller ones. Artists make fractions of a penny off of each stream or download, which is not enough to make a living off of, unless they land side deals. Also, the music you listen to on Spotify influences the music they recommend to you. This almost has the opposite effect of going to the record store and discovering new music for your Yourself. The concept of streaming is relatively new, meaning there is probably more innovation to come. Each invention has given us a new way to experience music. Maybe in the future, your listening device will be embedded directly into your ear. Ouch! Some might still prefer the soothing comfort of listening the old-fashioned way, even if you have to get off the couch to flip the record. Whatever the future holds, please don't stop the music. Thanks for watching and just tap or click on another video. Help us grow by hitting that subscribe button and ringing the notification bell.